Welcome back to another episode of Hammer and Ales, the show where I drink and review different exotic beers, build things, and fix broken shit. Today, we're going fishing. Now, if you're like me, you probably have 15, 20 fishing poles, and you're bad with all of them. So today, what we're going to do is we're at least going to try to organize those a little bit by making our own DIY fishing pole rack. Now, before we go fishing or build our fishing pole rack, we're going to need to make sure our gear is in good shape before we catch any fish. Today we're going to be putting on this Cast King Fluoro Coat 100% coated fluorocarbon line. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a little bit of a trick how to put the line on your reel without having so much memory in that line. Okay, what you're going to want to do is get a bowl of warm water. That's what we're going to start with. We're going to take our line and we're going to go ahead and throw it in there. We let it float. Then we're going to open the bale on our reel. We're going to take our line. We're going to tie what I like to call the mo knot. The reason it's called the mo knot is because if one doesn't work, you tie one mo. We tie our mo knot on here. Okay, now this is 12 pound test. But what we do is when we put it in the water, what this is gonna do is gonna allow the line to come off of the spool more naturally to get rid of any of the memory that is left in the line. So, go ahead and tighten this down. We'll start here. Hmm. <laughs> Jake's too low. There we go. All right. There we go. And you can see it spinning off there pretty naturally with no issues. Like I said, what we're doing is we're wanting this to come off of the reel more naturally because monofilaments and fluorocarbons tend to have a whole lot of memory in the line. And what that means is it's the shape of the spool that it's still on. So when you go to cast or anything of that sort, it could spring off of the reel. But this actually looks like it's on there pretty good with no issue whatsoever. And the warm water helps to uh, loosen up the line a little bit. It's coming off of there pretty good, which is impressive. Well, I'd say that's all right. We're going to go ahead and cut it. Most normal people would go ahead and use a pair of scissors, but I'm still a little bit of a hillbilly, so I went ahead and cut it with my teeth. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and string the line through each of the eyes. Like that. Through there. Through there. Lastly, up here. Now, this rod is going to primarily be my maybe bluegill rod, my crappie rod, uh, smallmouth, anything of that sort. So, smaller game fish or pan fish. Okay, now time for everybody's favorite part, or at least mine mystery beer. Ooh, we got a tall boy this time. It looks like it's been taped up and hidden, so we can't tell what it is. So let's go ahead and get our first taste. A 
That just smells like a regular old beer. Doesn't have that hoppy IPA smell. Man, wow, that's really good. That reminds me a lot of like just regular mainstream beers, but I'm surprised, very impressed. Oh, I could drink a bunch of these. Okay, well, let's whip out our rods and worms and go get them wet. Shut up, shut the fuck up, Dad. <laughs> All right, we're good. Hey, what are you doing? Come, Come here. Thank you. We're going to do the intro. Yeah, you said we were done. No, you no, I said shut the fuck up. That just means don't talk when I'm doing this. This is I'm leaving. Okay, so we're out here at Indian Lake. Uh, I got my production manager Justin and what are you? <laughs> and then <laughs> pops. So we're hoping to reel in a monster, guys. So. That's what I do all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Who don't wake up in the morning? <laughs> We're gonna go ahead and cast out the big old, big old shrimp pole here. Oh, look at her go. Blah. Yeah, wait. Did I? Dude, dude, yeah, yeah, you're going, you're going. Get it! No, dude. Get it! It's on. It's totally on. Holy cow, get her, bud. That's fine. That's a big one. Is he talking? Mm -hmm. That's a pork chop. Damn, boy! Hold the, hold the rod. He ain't that. I mean, he's big enough. Alright. Pork chop, sir. Oh, yes, oh, that's a sad one. Oh, I got good. Alright. Is it? Oh, thank you. Smile for camera, Justin. Oh. Alright, buddy. Thank you. You did. Oh, yeah. I got good. It's awesome, baby. Say yeet. 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 It's a John Denver thing. <laughs> Ready? Come on, Bubba. Oh yeah, he's happy. Here we go. Oh, he just flew away. And the bald eagle right there. This episode of Hammer and Nails is not brought to you by Monster yet. Yeah, pull it, pull it. All right. All right. How big is it? The biggest one of the day. Wow. All right. Okay, we bagging him. If you want to bag Jesus! New, uh, lucky basket is why we brought this. Monkey and I have always had this. Well, did we measure it? We need to. Where's the thing? We we God, that is a decent sized channel, babe. All right. He needs to go back. <laughs> These things are sweet, dude. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a whiner. The battery's almost red. This is the champine, the dad who caught the fish. The champine is. <laughs> That's my Olympic name. <laughs> the champine is. <laughs> he competed in the Greek Olympics. I 
not a fucking recruiting. Okay, after many unsuccessful attempts at fishing at uh, places, I, d I don't know what was going on. We are here at a super secret little pond. I can't tell you its location. All I can do is tell you that you're at it. Let's see if we can't hook into something. Right, right out in front of me, right here, about 20 feet, there's a school here, right? in between me and where I just threw that. Well, after that successful fishing trip, it's time to work on our fishing pole rack. Let's get an update on our mystery beer. Now, something I want to do that I haven't done in previous episodes is give you an idea of what color and what the beer looks like when I pour it into the glass. So that's what we're going to do now. Well, this is a pretty light color beer. I'm hoping that it's not just a regular generic type Pilsner, but man, it is delicious. Ah, oh, that's really good. Stay tuned because we're getting ready to reveal what it is. All right, so today we're going to be making a fishing pole holder. We're going to be using regular stuff like some reclaimed two by twos and this piece of plastic lattice. So I'm gonna go ahead and give you the measurements and build it, show you guys exactly what we're doing. Okay, we're gonna start out by building two frames that are gonna be two foot by one foot. Okay, and they can be two foot tall, one foot wide, however you wanna do it, however the orientation pleases you. 
But we're going to start out with a piece of 2x4 that I have ripped down into a 2x2. Two two. And this is a piece of reclaimed 2x4 because with the price of lumber lately, that's the best way to do things is reclaim it whenever you can. So. Okay, well, we, here we have the general setup of our frame. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fasten everything on the edges here. And we're going to use a 1 8 inch drill bit. And then I'm going to use these 2 and a half inch star bit screws to fasten them together. We want to make sure we take our square. Now we went over this in the first episode, this is a square, not a triangle. So, we'll square up our edge, and then we'll do that to all four corners, and then we'll make one more of these. frames built this is where the privacy lattice comes into play what we're going to do is we're going to cut the privacy lattice to fit on our edges here and here and then with those holes the crisscrosses and those holes in that privacy lattice we're going to span the distance we're going to be able to put our fishing poles in them and they'll rest right in there on either side of these and then you'll be able to mount these up on the wall on the ceiling of your garage wherever suits you. So let's go ahead and put this lattice on. Okay we want to make our measurement. We're going to measure from the outside to the outside and we got 24 inches. Now we're going to measure from the outside to outside and we got 15 and a quarter. And so we're going to make two pieces of this 24 inches long and 15 and a quarter. We're going to go ahead and set that right on top of these frames.
Okay, so we have our two frames, our two pieces of lattice. We're going to go ahead and attach them. With these little one inch drywall screws and these little washers here. But I just had a thought. We'll also go ahead and pre drill our holes in the lattice so we avoid splitting it. Okay, and let's not forget that we need to brand our wood project. Here at Hammer Nails, we've started a new thing where every wood project that I do, I'm gonna go ahead and brand it with this Gearheart Industries custom-made Hammer and Nails branding iron. So now, where did I put my lighter? Where is my lighter? All I found is this match. We gotta strike it on something rough. Good thing I went and saw Casey at Beards and Bows. Got me looking all sharp. If not, that match never would have lit. Well, there you have it, everybody. Our easy DIY fishing pole rack. Now, this particular fishing pole rack could probably fit about eight or nine fishing poles comfortably, and it's perfect for mounting on the ceiling of your garage or perhaps on a wall, wherever is convenient for you. So, real simple and real handy. Now, let's reveal our mystery beer. Okay, one last update on the mystery beer. Um, this beer was pretty light, it had a good flavor. I'm starting to think it was uh, one of those mainline, mainstream light beers, but I could be surprised. So, let's go ahead and find out what we have. All right, we have Corona made by Grupo Modelo, 4.5% alcohol. Heck yeah, Corona's pretty good. If I would have known that, I would have had a lime with it. Let's go ahead and see if we can't check out the can here as I tear it apart. <laughs> Come on, ah, there we go ruin our can here for presentation and there we are corona that's pretty good man corona is always a decent beer better with lime they used to make a i'll tell you a little trick here if you can find a lime rum take a couple sips out of this put a shot of the lime rum in there with another little squeeze of lime you'll have yourself a good night so corona extra well, here at Hammer and Ales, we rate our beers on a scale of zero to five. Zero being the worst, five being the best. And um, I'm just, I'm just gonna go ahead and give Corona one, two, three, four, and five hammers on the Hammer and Ales rating scale. I absolutely like it. It's very good, very refreshing. Definitely a good beer. If you've never had a Corona, you're missing out. Go out and try it. Well, that's all we have for this episode of Hammer and Ales. If you like what you see, as always, like, comment, share or subscribe, or all of the above. 
maybe head on over to the Hammer and Nails Facebook page and check out my merch. If that's not your style, consider a direct donation to my PayPal. I can post that link in the description below. It'll also be in the About section of the Hammer and Nails page. So there it is. That's what we got. We got Corona. We got our fishing pole holder. So from all of us here at Hammer and Nails to you, keep on doing what you're doing because no one can do it quite like you can.